Hi everyone, Joanna Walsh here. You're very welcome to the open day. And I've hope, I hope you've taken this opportunity to get as much information as possible about everything NUI Galway has to offer. My section here is going to give you some further information on the scholarship opportunities, specifically for international students. Now, I, I'd just like to comment on the previous sessions also. You've had some excellent information. My colleagues, Dermot and Maria, gave great insight in terms of the city itself, the admissions process, and my colleagues, Neve and uh, Katie, and the student ambassadors gave excellent insights into the student experience side of things. So I guess just to recommend that you all revisit those sessions again when you have the opportunity to do so, because you'll learn so much more about what's ahead of you. And it's great to actually engage with the students. They're here now, so they're living through the experience and they can think of things that we might not necessarily think of. So it's great to look over that, the things you didn't expect or what to pack. That's great information to have. So oh, I'll just go back a step. So my colleague Dermot told you a lot about Galway City and all of the interesting places, what to see, what you can do. Um, these images here show you, say, the Long Walk, which is a lovely area you, to, to go and walk by, and also the Bohemian feel you can see from the cities there. And also, like, it's located on the west, on the Wild Atlantic Way. So it's on the west coast of Ireland, two and a half hours from Dublin, and it's just a very scenic place. And just to comment as well that we're actually recording this session, so as well you can revisit this session also. And I particularly like these images of the campus. The bridge there is good because that's actually one of the closest spots to the city centre. So we can't really emphasise enough how close we are. It's just a 10 minute walk. And from this point here, you can be over in the shops within just a few minutes. And you'll all have seen the logo, the clock tower. So the image on the right shows you that clock tower. So the university was established in 1845. And that, that is the original building. So we would have had maybe 70, 80 students. And it's grown so much now to have maybe over 18,000 students. And the bottom right image gives you a sense of just some of the buildings. And there's actually, it's, it's a very scenic riverside location that the campus is on. So there's a river right behind where you see those daffodils. So my colleagues have already mentioned the cost of living. So I just wanted to revisit this slide with you again. It, it takes a bit of planning. It's a big move to move to a different country and there's a lot of things to consider. Uh, rent, for example, a lot of the postgraduate students I've been in touch with down through the years, they've maybe organized temporary accommodation for the first few weeks and this can be good. It gives you the opportunity to, well, you have somewhere to reach once you make the trip down from Dublin airport you have your accommodation sorted for the first few nights anyway. And I would recommend giving yourself perhaps two weeks and that gives you the chance to look at the options. So I know my colleague Dermot went through the on-campus options and you know, it's good to engage with the student ambassadors. They may uh, be posting up adverts on some of the Facebook groups in terms of a, a free room in a house or what's available there. And it really varies according to your budget. If you're staying on campus, you can pay per semester and some of the house shares can be quite reasonable. And depending if you're living maybe a, a bit off the campus, you could perhaps organize for uh, to rent a bicycle for the term and that sorts out your transport. And just to mention the city is quite flat, so you're not going to encounter any big hills in any of your cycling around. And again, like it's just so close to the city centre all of the amenity, all of the facilities are at your fingertips, really. They're all on your doorstep, so you have everything that you need. And my colleagues and the student ambassadors have made recommendations uh, according to the points here. But just to go through, we have an excellent library. So there's excellent facilities already there in terms of the books and study materials that, that you can gain access to. And even in, in the way things are now, like there's great online services as well. So check into all of those, see what's available. Uh, so that gives a sense of the, the total per year. And I just thought I'd include this as well. I, I know I had a link to the session earlier on, but just to give a sense, 
we always say to students that if you're looking at Galway, it's the fourth largest city in Ireland. So it isn't the capital city. Dublin is the capital. Galway is that bit, that bit smaller. So it is a lot easier to get around. And as you would expect, then the cost of accommodation isn't as expensive as, say, the capital city would be. So, OK, you have the Facebook, Google, all of those companies in Galway or sorry, in Dublin, but that tends to, the, the cost of accommodation can be quite high, particularly in those regions where the companies are. But Galway, likewise, is, is a global med tech hub. And sometimes it's referred to as the Silicon Valley over in the West Coast of Ireland. We too have a great selection of companies, but it's a bit more cost effective than living in a capital city. And then it, I guess everything is just so convenient so that's just to give you, uh, and you can access that city comparison on that website there. Okay, so let's get down to the, the, the main point of my presentation, which is the scholarships. So you will have hopefully researched your course and made some decisions now in, in, in terms of what you plan to study from September onwards. And just to highlight again, the master's courses in Ireland are generally, generally one year in duration. So that's one of the key advantages of uh, coming to study in Ireland. Everything is condensed into the 12 months, but you have your master's after one year. And of course, then the 1G visa allows you to stay on for a further two years. So you've considered that and, and you're planning the next step in your journey, your student journey, your career. So looking at the scholarships that are available, we have the postgraduate scholarship and we also have the region specific scholarships. And then I'll also go through some of the external scholarships. And really, just to highlight, the best place to get information on any of the scholarships is the International Office website. And their section is called, called Fees and Scholarships. So all of the information is there. Now, I'll go through everything. But just to let you know, once you click back in there, and even if they are external scholarships, you'll be able to access the information there. So let's move on. Oh, and just one other item, the terms and conditions, you can check through all of the specifics and all of the details there. So firstly, the International Merit Scholarship. So, and just to highlight, all of our scholarships come in the form of a partial fee waiver. So how does that work, you might ask? Well, what happens is once you're successful in getting the scholarship, we then contact the fees office and the tuition fee that's applicable is reduced by that fee, the partial fee waiver amount. So when you go to register, for example, you owe 2000 less on your tuition fees and all of that work gets done in the background. So the good news about these scholarships is you don't have to do much else. Once you have applied and once you have accepted a place on your chosen uh, master's programme, you are automatically considered. Now, the closing date is the 31st of March. It's the same with a lot of the scholarships that the closing date, I'm afraid, is fast approaching. But once you have accepted your place on your programme before the 31st of March, you're automatically considered for the International Merit Scholarship. So we mentioned the word merit. How's that done? What we do is we reach out to the programme directors. So when you apply for your master's programme, the programme director makes the admissions decision. So they decide who's going to get a place on their programme. And it can be very competitive. So congratulations if you've already secured your place. What we do when we want to award these 20 merit scholarship to our postgraduate students, all international, we reach out to the programme directors and we ask them to make their recommendations. Thereby, we can be sure that we're choosing the uh, recipients of these awards based on merit. The next scholarship then, we'll go into the region specific scholarships. So the India Special Merit Scholarships. Now, we have been active in India for quite a few years. We've been traveling to India for over seven years attending events. So that's why at this point, we have a specific range of scholarships just for India. And uh, they're very attractive. They're open to students. There's a little bit more involved to be considered for the India specific scholarships. Again, the closing date is the 31st of March, and that means you should have accepted your place 
before the 31st of March. What else do you need to do? You have to actually submit an application. So we actually have 16 scholarships to the value of 4,000 euros. So that's really good. That means that your expenses could be covered for four months. So 16 of those awards to be divided up amongst our successful recipients. What to do next? Again, if you check back on the International Office Scholarship and Fees section of the website, there's a link there so you can apply online. What's required from us? You need to submit your personal statement. And in that personal statement, you include these topics. Your interest in studying in NUI Galway, how you foresee your relationship with NUI Galway developing in the future, and how you will promote links with NUI Galway, both during your scholarship tenure and as alumni. So you might be wondering why we're asking those questions. Well, you saw our student ambassador session earlier on. We have an excellent panel of student ambassadors. So already we're looking to next year to see who might fit the bill, who might be interested in taking part in this. So we ask for this information so that we get a sense of their students, their commitment to Galway and their interest in studying in NUI Galway. So it's a good way to get a sense for that. And it's also good practice for you guys, because when we advertise the International Student Ambassador panel, you will have already prepared your application somewhat by, by thinking through these topics. So there's our India specific scholarships. Now, for the remaining region specific scholarships. So as I mentioned, we have uh, uh, some scholarships specifically for India, and then we also have these region specifics. And I would say it may seem like it's a very vast region, but there is generally just a couple of countries we're active in. So by all means, make an application. You could be lucky. And the 4,000 euros, for example, or even two, thousand euros of a fee waiver, it can cover your expenses for a couple of months. So I'll just go through these region specific scholarships. So for Africa, we have two by 4,000 euros, North America, five by 2,000 euros, Latin America, two by 4,000 euros, and Southeast Asia, two by 4,000 euros. How to apply? Again, there's a little bit more involved here, and it's back to that personal statement, and also to apply, using the online application form. And just to highlight the closing date for those region specific scholarships fall on the 31st of March. So again, visit our website and click online to apply for the specific region or the region specific scholarships. And best of luck to everyone. Now, uh, for China, I've done a separate slide for these because it's a little bit different to the process for the previous region specific scholarships. For China, we have the CLADA scholarship scheme. The closing date is the 30th of March and we have 10 to the value of 2000 euros. And I've put this on a separate slide if you like because the application process is a little bit different to the previous slides in that you're applying via education in Ireland but still all of the information is on the International Office Fees and Scholarship section of the website. Now, I've also included information about the China Scholarship Council uh, scheme. Now, this is for fully funded PhD students. And I know there's separate sessions in relation to PhD students, but I just wanted to bring this to your attention because who knows, this time next year, students from China might be uh, looking at their options having completed their masters. So NUI go and have an agreement with China Scholarship Council and we have fully funded PhDs. So NUI go away waive the application fee and China Scholarship Council cover your living expenses with a stipend. The China Scholarship Council portal opens from the 10th of March. So any PhD students that may be interested in this need to go about uh, checking the application process as soon as possible. What you need to have is an offer letter for NUI Galway in the first instance. And if it's a PhD, so you already have need to do, ha, check to find a suitable supervisor. And if you check the China section, so it's a little bit different, we have a your country section of the International Office website. And within that, there is a China uh, page 
And on the China page, there's a tab specifically dedicated to the China Scholarship Council. And on that tab, you'll find the specifics of how to apply. But first you need to either find a supervisor or choose from the list of projects. And just to highlight for all of the students from China that we do have a colleague based in Beijing and Betty's email is included here. And indeed you can check on the slides afterwards just to, uh, to confirm for sure. And we also have our China website. Our JE Karen School of Business and Economics have their own business merit scholarships also. The closing date is a little bit later for these. It's Friday the 9th of April and you can get up to 50% off your tuition fees. What you need to do there is it's a similar application process, but it's on a different page. But it, once you consult back to the International Office Scholarships section of our website, it can link you where you need to apply. And it involves, again, completing the online scholarship form. Again, you need to have accepted your place by payment of the deposit. And when you do that, the, the deposit that you pay at that point is actually part payment of your tuition fees. So the eligibility there is you must have achieved the equivalent of a H1. Now, my colleague Maria went through it in great detail on her presentation, how we judge this. But the Your Country page of our website gives some insight into the equivalencies of a H1 or a 2-1. And again, you must have uh, confirmed your acceptance and you need to apply online. This slide here just gives you a sense of what you should be seeing when you click on the apply for the scholarship. So the, this section of the slide shows you the screen you see. So you know you're in the right place and you need to submit your details and your personal statement. And just to also highlight this other scholarship, if you have a conditional offer, um, so you haven't yet reached your IELTS or English language requirement. We have an English language centre that provides a 10 week pre-sessional English course. And I'm happy to advise that they're giving a full tuition fee waiver and that's to the value of 3,050 euros. So in order to apply for that, you need to do so before the 30th of April and you submit your personal statement to May Vegan in the English language centre and we can post up the presentation so you have the details there. And then the Government of Ireland Scholarship Scheme. This is an excellent scheme and the Government of Ireland have 60 of these scholarships. So with this scholarship, you're fully funded for a year of your studies, be it a year of your bachelor, your master's or one year of your PhD. And for these scholarships, NUI Galway waive the tuition fee, but the Government of Ireland also cover your stipend to the value of about 10,000 euros. So it's a separate application process to the NUI Galway. So this is an external scholarship. So you need to check with the Government of Ireland HEA website. I've included the contact email for queries and the closing date is the 26th of March. Then, if you also have visited our scholarship section of the website, we have an array of external scholarships. I've highlighted here the Irish Aid or Ireland Fellows Programme. So there's a list of countries and regions and eligible courses. So check through that, check the irishaidfellowships.ie. And in terms of the application, you'd be going through the Irish Embassy in your country. We also have Fulbright scholarships, Open Society scholarships, and just to pick up on the, the William D. Ford Direct Loan Programme. So for students from the USA, just to confirm that we have a, vet, a federal aid administrator as part of our staff that's focused on processing the federal aid loan applications. So they can, to help you, you need to apply to NUI Galway, but you can find all of that information on our website in terms of how to apply and the application process. Your tuition fees, you can double check on the fees and funding section of the website. And just to highlight then, when do you need to pay your fees? We always recommend that you check the study visa requirements for your country. Um, so check with, say, the Irish Embassy in your country, be it in New Delhi, Abuja. And then whatever requirements they have, you need to abide by those. And as of last year, the new entrant international students, so that students just in their first year, have the option to pay their fees in two installments. So the first is as per your visa requirements and has to be done before registration. 
So that gets you up and running on all of the university systems. And then the second instalment is due by the 31st of January, 2021. And I guess just to pick up on this point again, with all of the intense master's study and all of what to pack and everything, it's just important to highlight what the city has to offer and to make sure and enjoy yourself as well. And just to pick out on the top right hand co corner, that's the Galway Festival, um, big top we call it. So you have concerts and again, that's just on the corner of the campus. So hopefully you'll get to experience sitting on the campus, listening to the bands, warming up for their performance as part of the Galway Arts Festival. My personal favourite is the Philip Fla, and it's just a few minutes from the campus. So hopefully we'll all get to enjoy that next year where we finish up at say four or five in the evening and, and can pop in and watch a movie in the Town Hall Theatre. These are just a sense of some of the clubs and societies. We have our Diwali celebration on campus each year. It was virtual this year. And the top, or the bottom right hand corner shows the arts festival that did take place during the summer months. And again, just to highlight all of the contact information for the office and the social media channels. That gives you a great opportunity to collect with our social media ambassadors. And it's really, there's great work been done and they're, they're great ambassadors. So take advantage of them and get their insights in, as well into any questions you have or any information you need. So that's all from me and that's my email address there. So I'm happy to take any questions now. Hi, question. Is it possible to both receive an international like post-grad merit, the, the general one and a country specific scholarship? Like can you Good have question. multiple? And something I meant to cover in my presentation. So I'm glad you asked. It actually isn't because the tuition fee waivers, that's what they are. So it's a portion of your tuition fee is waived. So for that reason, you can only get one waiver at a time. So unfortunately, unfortunately whilst you can apply for as many as you want, you can't combine them and like I guess the process so there isn't a cash award involved if you like it's that the tu tuition fee is waived so when you go to pay your fees hopefully it's waived in full or there's a partial amount waived is that okay Samantha yes thank you cool. <laughs> okay does anybody else have any questions uh, yeah, I just have a quick question. If you apply for one of the country specific ones and also apply for the Government of Ireland International Education Scholarship, is there a deadline to accept uh, one of them? Because I know you can only have one scholarship from the university, but I know last year successful applicants of the government scheme, they didn't find out until I believe it was mid or late July. So is there an option if you had received say, one from the university, but you wanted to wait to see if you received the larger amount? Is there an option of like waiting to see or do you just have to accept the scholarship once you get it? Oh, well, Emily, if you are fortunate enough to get a full tuition fee waiver, I don't think we'd be holding anything back. So of course you'd be entitled to take advantage of the full tuition fee waiver and you could give back your, your partial fee waiver. So don't worry about that at all. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And That's what I luck. thought. I just, I just wanted to confirm. Thank you. Of course, and, and hopefully it does work out that way, Emily. <laughs> oh, great. So, and thanks to my colleagues for, uh, I hadn't even looked at the chat function, but I see that they've covered all of the information there. Um, I, I think I've gone slightly over my allotted time. So just to highlight again, the scholarship section of the website has all of the information. And of course, the team at the International Affairs Office, we're happy to help as much as we can as well. Um, so it, it, it's, it's an important time and it's a big decision to make. So best of luck to all of you. We're here to try and make the transition as easy as possible. So I guess just to highlight again, uh, you can revisit any of the sessions that we've done today, but reach out to us if you need any further help. And if there's no more questions, one last chance, anyone? Okay, we'll leave it at that then, okay? Best of luck, everyone. <laughs>